do. The first map will be Vertigo. It's seen a lot of changes. Astralis forging their path to success on the map as it was introduced into the map pool. And it's number four versus fifth on the ESL World Rankings. I'm looking forward to seeing how far this series goes. Will we see the third? Dust two if we need it, but we start now on Vertigo. We certainly do. Astralis on the CT side is to pick up G2 and they're sending five players over towards this A ramp. And we are going to see a focus towards short as well. Zipex can hear them coming. It's fast commitment. Three up towards the bomb side. Smokes are going down. They're going for that quick plan if possible. And they've gained a lot of ground here. Okay, holding it now. They've got some nades for Kenny, and two of them aren't enough. Oh, but the bullets are. Bomb went down regardless, though. So perhaps advantage G2, despite the man disadvantage. Yeah, the bomb will count as an extra man at this point, but it's a retake setup for Astralis. You can see them dropping smokes towards Shaw here. Kind of nullifies Amanek, and he's given up his position as well, taking some pop shots towards the boost position. We have got the Astralis boys now encroaching towards the bomb, but the defuse not going to be fully committed oh. to, and we have got Zipex fending them off here. It's going to be a team kill oh, coming no. through. It's absolute pandemonium. Two versus two, there's surely no time. Uh, it's absolute chaos, and we all see Jackson Amanek closing things out. Three for Jackson in the end, one of them is teammate, but he will be winning the round. Yeah, so he's he uh, comes into the round with one kill. I think he actually killed three people in that round. Maths checks out. Someone's got to do the dirty work. Okie dokie, artichoke. We're going into round two. Armored Deagles, sometimes Astralis tend to err on the side of... A little caution, but for this one, it does seem like everyone's going to be throwing all of their nades into the CT setup. Yeah, this is pretty normal from G2 since we've been watching their games. They go for the four SMGs and the one rifle setup here on their anti ecos allows them to be quite quick and nimble. And as we can see, exactly that over towards the A ramp. Three individuals walking their way up very sprightly here. Oh, well, nobody's home. So this force by normally works out pretty well for Astralis. We'll see a bit of damage inflicted there towards Jax. Quite significant considering they're the Deagle and Nexa. He'll take an eight down to 48. <laughs> very, very well coordinated, isn't it, from Astralis? Take a look at how far their nades have got them. They've managed to buy time and they've managed to get through warbangs and nades. Nexa and Jax on soggy 48 and 17. Now the smokes can be lined up. Fortunately, Jax still alive. We'll be able to throw his up. Glaive wanting to contest on the short position. Kenny will be throwing the second. They still have a lot of nades left here. There's even a, a chance for a retake if Astralis want to. HEs to deny the plan, a flash to get them back into the round. This could be big. And they seem comfortable in that retake and they seem comfortable in all those smokes. Zipnix, he's found a gap. Oh, there's so much CT presence here as well. The smoke's gonna dissipate in about five seconds or so. When they go for the plant, this could be where Astralis swarm. One more smoke deployed. Nexa there with just no help at all. Kenny S, the walking wounded as well. They'll go for the plant. The swing will come through. The grenade, oh. not quite enough. And it takes Amanek down to nine. <laughs> Astralis in such a fantastic position. They need to find these kills quickly. Look at the health, Henry. 17, two, nine. Kenny does manage to claw one back with his low HP. Nexa, not the same for him. And now, gonna have to play the game of survival. Might wanna get that rifle on Hunter. Otherwise, this is gonna be very difficult. Fake from Glaive, Amanek. Just baiting in the smoke. It fades now. He loses his guys and will eventually get caught. Dupree's push doesn't find too much. They He's have to have hold to defuse it. it. Hope for the best. It might still work out for them. One more kill will do it. They're not defusing. And oh, it's going to work. It's Astralis who will be finding that defuse in the end. They had to go for a chat and there was 10 seconds on the nose when they started defusing there. One HP on Glaive as well. A single bullet would have taken him down. But the covering fire, the low HP of G2 does lead to an Astralis victory here. 1-1 one, one. with the bomb planted. You're almost guaranteed to see a response here. But just a Desert Eagle for Kenny so far. So they could be hedging their bets and going for the AK in the following round. Yeah, well, an AWP in his hands is absolutely vital for G2. We were talking about some of his stat lines on this map in previous matches. He can just do dirty, dirty things. Either peeking into the A bomb site on that uh, T side, on the CT side, defending, moving around, being very, very agile. It's going to be a very key weapon. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's a bit of a kooky angle, and Almanac's managed to get a good bit of aggression up there. I wonder if he can get his info on sandbags, though, because for now, they have dug device into that sandbags position. It's often overlooked, especially when there's no utility to be thorough. And these wall bangs from Zipex, they're so effective. Yeah. And it changes to the MAC-10. So doing the damage with the Deagle, swapping on through, and they're oh, not going to clear sandbags here. Yeah, they're probably not even going to consider that. Device could be on for an absolute massacre of a sequence here. We'll see if the flashbang 
is going to be effective. We can definitely see that one. There's a couple of kills on the three, no problem. Now, going to be looking for that ace. There's the quad kill for Device. And Jax, he'll oh. be towards middle. Nice shot. Fair play to him. This wasn't the force by. They'll be getting AKs out next round. So we did expect Astralis to have quite the upper hand here. But 2-1 guarantee to see if Jax can do any more damage. It would be up to likes of Zipex to give it to him. You can see he's got no armor. Just a matter of time before he's taken down. We'll do a little bit of damage towards Zipex, but that's it. We have got 2-1. AK's available. G2 will have no AWP, however. So it will be the MAC-10, the only sacrifice they'll have to make. I have some good news, boys. What's, What's up? That? The uh, Skybox, it's updated to the most current version of Ooh. Vertigo. So we can bust her out here this evening if anything crazy is happening. Keep your eyes on any smokes or flashes that these two nerdy teams might be pulling on out. Device is very, very capable at containing that ramp aggression. It seems, oh though, my what, God, what just happened to their health? Hunter with a fantastic two-piece, though. Does Claw G2 back in firm control of the round. Amanek forced off of the flames. Next, uh, with low HP, is actually going. He can get caught here, and he oh. does. The bomb will not be planted. A spectacular lineup from Device. Yeah, very confident. And there's an incendiary to deny the plan further. You can see Amanek scrambles to get the bomb down here. They will allow him to do so. And it's Kenny S defending from the sandbags here. Amanek does manage to peel away. And the retake begins here. It's not looking good for Amanek. He goes down to about one oh. HP, but Kenny S, he pulls things back. It's actually a two versus two now. They still have a Molotov. Smoke and a kit available for Glaive. That will land on top of the bomb now. Nullifies the Molotov, and the defuse should be happening momentarily. So Device's responsibility makes a lot of sense. The fake, the frag, they are low. Amanek the same. Sound cube. Oh, oh the molly. No. Glaive just backed up into it. That was supposed to be the, the fake. Round. That should be the round right there. There's no time for Device. And just like that, Amanek's flames have done all the hard work. He doesn't really know what's going on. Can't believe it. Does he die as well? No, it's cool. So Device will be giving that round away. Can we see the replay? We have to see how he fell into the Molotov. It must have been him retreating. Nine foul, dropped down from the side, perhaps. And it all went wrong. 2-2, two, two, G2. Winning by the skin of their teeth. It was Device. He managed to deny the plan. Great wall bang as well. It was looking fantastic. And then it all comes down to this moment where he just had to save the AWP. Gets the kill. So he takes all five down. Bear that in mind. And we do save the orb. So we'll be Astralis calling for a tactical timeout here. You'd assume G2 will get a buy. The money's so low. Uh, there'll have to be a couple of compromises. So next with 3600. Same story for Jax. He'll be at Galil's. Maybe even Deagle's. Still very early stage of this game. It doesn't feel like we've only had four rounds <laughs> go past, but Astralis, they have a chance right now, even after losing that round, to steady everything that they need. They have the kit in the hands of Device. Glaive can actually buy one as well. They're not buying. Uh, opting, opting not to. Just going to stick with uh, the snapping turtle right there, the 5-7. It's funny with a round victory, though. Oh, on the G2 side of things, yeah. We, we've spoken about this before. That's true. They just won a round. I've never commentated a round where someone's ecoed after I, winning. I think we had it happen yeah. like, a couple weeks ago. It was, it was it was on the nose before. That's ben. right. It was like they had a couple of AKs. But that I was think. for match point or something. They yeah. were like 14. This is unusual. But honestly, like in five years of casting, this has never happened. Someone reminded me of one that I, I definitely spectated, but it didn't stick out in my mind. It was 100 Thieves when they were at the Berlin Major. They also had a round where they had won one and then they had to take the save or, or do a partial. I don't remember the specifics, but it's so unusual to happen. But I think just with the way that the, the way the round went down there. Yeah, and the way the economy swings back and forth, if you're you know, surviving with hardly anybody or nobody, it's just going to get very, very difficult here. So G2... What a horrible feeling. You win the round, you take a save, or just a partial, and, and here you are just clutching at straws, basically. And the 5-7 becomes very powerful. You can see, what, four players are our helmets. Kenny has no armor whatsoever. Uh, so we can have a field day with that particular pistol, the snapping turtle, as Chad put it. And towards the middle we go. No utility to speak of on the GCU side of things here. So just trying to stick together. You can see them all detached, making sure they can trade off each other. Have a lot of damage inflicted. It's a good incendiary, though. And just will be caught out. It's going to be a trade from Kenny, so they might have a chance here. They certainly might. It depends on Device, and he's looking pretty crispy. Oh. So was Jax, though. He does manage to shut down the sniper. Hunter, if only he had the bomb, there would be so much space there. But instead, he's on the A site, rotating through. He could get a flank, Needs but he's being down. very loud about this. And with only 10 seconds, this could be his death. Oh. And one bullet, there it is. He needs to die. 
Six, five. If he keeps the oh, rifle. No, no the, oh, it's the Mac 10 Eagle is not the end of the world, I suppose. Yeah, but he would have gotten the loss bonus of yeah. what, 1400, which would have meant that he, he definitely could have got himself the AK. So maybe he'll get one dropped across right now, but the money's still horrible on the G2 side of things. This is so puzzling. Yeah, they really haven't done well here. After winning a round, they took an eco and they spent too and much. And Amanex got 3.4 in the... Yeah, they didn't even play it. Yeah. Oh, no. This hurts a bit. Yeah, this is a very interesting one to diagnose, perhaps, because I'm not really sure what happens at this point. I've never seen this before, as I mentioned. And uh, going forward, this is uncharted territory. It's difficult to work out what they're going to do after this one. So they've saved the MAC-10, but as Chad said, he gets no extra money. So they've got a MAC-10, he could afford to drop an 8K and then just get flashbangs to use the MAC-10 himself. Yeah. That's something, I, it might be their only option. Or he drops a MAC-10 and gets his own AK out, etc. So they're partial buying again, again but this yeah. time they can invest enough to do at least a set piece. Yeah, they could actually get the bomb planted perhaps. But still, the chances of that lie in favor of Astralis up against Tech-9s and a MAC-10 yeah. here. And th bear in mind, they won. Round number four, and now they're gonna lose five and six. That's if everything goes down the way I see it. There's always a chance to work out. It's just not that sort of map you're battling for. A control, normally due to the frags. We'll see if they can break open towards middle. They've got a decent set piece as we anticipated. They don't manage to get the quick kill, but maybe Jax can hunt down his prey. Ooh, they're fast. Very quick, but doesn't look like it's gonna get them too much. You can see a perfect flashbang in support. And the rest, well, it's just dissolving for G2. Kenny trying to get out of dodge. Yeah, these sort of rounds are a little more powerful than the likes of Mirage, because you can actually lock the CTs out and actually have a good chance there. You can see they were trying to use momentum behind them, surprise towards middle. It's a nice little gambit from them. They managed to get the Molotov down, quick pounce, but Astralis handled it very well indeed. 4-2, money finally stabilizing, but they're only gonna have $1,900 in the next round. Bear in mind, they didn't start with the loss bonus. They started at zero because they won that round, then took the eco. That's why it's a strange result. I think you're better off taking the gamble there when you have a chance of breaking down the money of the CTs as well. I thought that was a perplexing option, if you ask me. Yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're six rounds in, and already G Astralis G2's got a scratch in our heads. That's not something you can anticipate with most games of Counter-Strike, but already Device also onto a consistent and a rather potent orbing presence. He's on 11 frags already. You can see how neat and tidy this one ended up. Can Kenny buy an orb? Because he invested heavily in a Tech-9 armor and a full set of grenades just then, and they didn't plant once more. So he can't even bring out the AWP here. We're halfway just, through the half. Uh, what's going on? And he full, like I just said, he fully invested in a Tech-9 and a full set of nades. So here he only has an AK-47 and two flashes. They only have two Molotovs. Amanek has no nades. All right, it's let's see how this one ideal. goes. I mean, they're the first to admit at this stage. I don't think it's gone well at all in terms of the finances. And Glade, hungry for blood. Look at that second kill here. It's roasting to a crisp. Surely gets taken out. And there it is. A couple of kills now for G2, but the bomb has been spotted. Down towards scaffolding, and we have got a three on three. Best chance they've had in a while, to be honest with you. Hunter and Exit are removed. It's normally Hunter who's instrumental towards the A side of things. And Jax, key frag, goes in Zipex's favor. Bomb still down. Look at the flank as well. They've contained them. Dupree, he's got them locked in towards A now. He doesn't have to do anything else. He can just sit and wait. Once the threat level reaches red, he can push on through, lock them in, and it should be done and dusted. Calm as you like. Device will knock another down. And the flank from Zipex this time. His presence on short has been very successful throughout this half. Astralis are looking deadly, like, you know, like changing the changing the conversation, changing the dialogue and taking a, a look from the CT perspective. Device and Zipnix have locked down A consistently. And now look at the money again for G2. Where was what, roughly 2,700 across the board? They had the loss bonus of 2,400 coming in there, so they can't buy yet again. They have had, since round four, a round that they won, two partial buys, a gun round with AKs and not full utility, Kenny yet to have an AWP, and we're in round eight. And they have pistols again? Yeah, this this is going to be a, a difficult half to recover. Now, G2 know they've dropped the ball in a few departments here. And now they've allowed Astralis to really build up a nice bank of cash, especially after this round, chat. They're going to get another, what, 3250 on top of this for winning this cleanly by virtue of kills. They're going to have AK-47s. Probably be fine for not the rest of the half per se, but a good three or four rounds. Yeah, not only that, they have been successful in every single round's opening duel. They're currently sitting at 8 and 0. <laughs> How much does this personify the idea that we say that they just sit around in spawn trying to bait out grenades and we've got Kenny S just jumping Literally up and down on a porta potty just, uh, just waiting, using this like a timeout. And it's kind of encapsulates everything yeah. we tell you that uh, that's 
why they do it. That's why they go for pistols, no armor, just to bait out grenades, have a bit of a timeout, and uh, just talk about their future. Yeah, like so they're all talking to each other now. Like, I plan to retire in the countryside. Yeah, the five-year uh, plan. Yeah. All laid out on the server right now. <laughs> oh, what are you going to do with your winnings, Nexa? Either way, eventually reaching its climax, they will probably uh, be good for one. If that mid player sticks around, you can see Glaive doesn't look like the kind of player that plans to stick around here in middle, but... He's thinking about it. He's definitely thinking about it. He's flirting with the idea. Oh. The back and oh, forth. Oh, the sound cue. That's enough. Vegas is here now. They can lock this one down with a quick crossfire. Good for one. Mo down by Glaive. And it's six to two. It's time for G2 to start pulling their finger out and pulling perhaps some weapons out. Won't get the AWP again unless he wants to go glass there cannon. And okay, now we get that T side all. Very potent, but Astralis did manage to get build up quite the bank over the course of these uh, already discussed economical woes for the international squad that is G2. Can't call them the Frenchies anymore. Fast Smoke gonna be coming out from G2 from Amanek. And he's got flashes alongside it too, to be precise. That will enable them to have the advantage advancing up the ramp. Zipex, he's been throwing this nade every round, real simple. Bear in mind, we're in round number Look nine. Good it is. And it's the first time we've seen Kenny S in the AWP now. So over the years in Kenny S lineups, that's been a common I've uttered a few times. You say he's so influential, he's so good on this map, and you don't see him with it due to the financial decisions. Here comes a full commitment, looking much better. Next up, and Jax cracking the A side wide open here. Should be around already. That confirms it. Amanek will take down Dupree. Five versus two, Glaive and Device. Can't even think about this one. But as we mentioned, that money's already built up to such an astronomical level. Device might be able to stay around and do something with this. Oh. And unfortunately for him, has been spotted. Nexa takes him down and just up the Glaive to try and do some damage on the exits. Yeah, if Glaive can get a couple of kills here, that's probably all he's worth. Winning this round, well and truly out of contention right now. Bomb is half ticked. Has a full set of nades. Doesn't really have to go down. It's only financial damage you're inflicting on the other side of things here. So here's the first. And he converts. He's good for two. And he's out of there. So enough damage has been done. Glaive's happy enough with this. He's going to die in transition. Amanek will finish him off. But as Henry was just saying, money is good. The bar will come back out. And maybe Astralis will be more assertive over towards that A ramp now. The grenades are doing good damage, but you just can't let G2 walk up in that fashion. Those contact plays are something we've seen them do time and time again. And when you have individuals like Hunter, Nexa, yeah. they hit some bangers of shots. Well, that was more like it. That was back to business as usual for G2 at that point. That's the sort of round we expect from them. With the Kenny S Orp out, they're hitting some of their key shots from their star players. That was much better but can they keep it up here they have been wounded early on remember this is uh, one of the last few remaining of the t-sided maps in the pool right now and g2 have got a lot of work to do they're still going to win this half six three down we enter round number 10 and glaive aggie is ever looking to spray them down for the smoke if possible this time not taking a severe amount of damage kick things off on either side and they might be going back for a b set piece here and you see a lot of teams boosting up dropping the smokes trying to sneak their way up towards b it's a lot more viable these days, and the pop flashes are deployed. Dupree, though, using that secondary orb, oh. and actually misses a shot you'd think he'd have at the Ooh. lock and key. Yeah, and now look at them. The bunnies have already made it to B. Pushed up on the Jenny, and a missed shot again from Dupree. It's double from Amanek. Hunter's found one as well. The site is there. As Device got to find a quick one. It's AWP. He won't be able to contest the plant. Kenny's supporting as well. A quick one, but not possible. Nice hold. And that's another for G2. Quite the pivot. And now the money's gone. Look at this on the CT side. Then they get the $1,900 loss bonus going into the next. Device, Dupree, Zipex, they've all bottomed out. If Glaive goes down, you can add his name to the list. Oh, he's getting close. Seeing if he can take this off away from Kenny. The warning shot's being fired. He'll be heard now. So Glaive will do his best to save, but Hunter, well, he's going to do what he does best and hunt him down. Dead. And there we have it. Finally, Astralis have been broken. Took a while, but... Uh, Two rounds in a row for G2 have finally taken them out of contention. We are going to see two and a half thousand dollars on average. As Astralis almost certainly will take the eco here. There's no real reason to partial buy into it. And with $2,400 coming to their accounts next round, they've actually got a pretty, de pretty decent haul, generally speaking. So a Desert Eagle for Magus, considering a little bit more money. The rest of them, though, as expected, full eco. Not really much you can do with this map. It's not really designed for full stacks. You're going to see them try and send it towards middle. That's nice. actually works oh. out. And he can get a second there. Look at that damage inflicted down at 2 HP. He's going to grate it there. Yeah, that need from Nexus has done a lot than he, more than he anticipated. He's going to be pushed now. He's got to deal with it. Does spot the head of Device. Getting a bit overwhelmed now. It's getting a bit awkward. 
does tuck in. If he loses this he as well, out. he has to get both of them. He's under so much scrutiny. Jax, let's not forget, he lost his health as well. Oh, Device could low. actually get both with 20 HP, no armor, and a USP. He's ratting this. Cavalry's coming. Oh my god, one bullet from any of these weapons and all. No. <laughs> they get out of jail. Oh, it's so close to the full eco victory. Nexa and Jax, one bullet away from certain death. For now, Zipex in a four on one. Things have calmed down here. It's the clutch minister, but. Uh, I don't think he'll be doing much about this. This one's not in his portfolio. You know, he's uh, he's not too bad. He, he covers most clutches. Sure. But this one, you know, he says, look, not for me. Yeah. It's a high, vo highly volatile uh, market. The 1v3, no, excuse me, 1v4, no armor USP clutch. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're a wild bunch. He saves those. Usually saves them for majors or really big moments. So right yeah. now, he'll just, he'll just hold on. Hold on to the AK-47 and do his absolute best. Now, I, uh, I brined the chicken for about two and a half hours longer today. I don't know if it made any difference. Uh, it was the same for me. I, I really regretted not getting to my chicken sooner. Uh, well, yeah, because it was hot when it came out of the oven and then yeah. cold after your shower, I'd assume. Yeah, well, I just I thought I could get away with a quickie. I couldn't. But it was still delicious. And the honey roasted element of your sweet potato. Yeah, there was carrot in there as well. A uh, German word for sweet potato, by the way, is quite fun. Süß mm. Kartoffeln. Nah. It's a whole thing. Nah. They lost the other yes. When they got uh, Dirty Das and... Oh, that whole thing. I've, yeah. I, I actually rage quit German lessons today. Really? Yeah, the the, and they changed that. Not even, not the isn't safe, neither is A. You that's know, true. A yeah. apple, an apple, that's yeah. pretty much as, co as complex as it gets in the English language. The Germans just like to really confuse everyone. It's six to five, and we are back with Astralis's buy. So let's see if they can lock it down again. Will G2 return to A? We saw that uh, having mixed bag of success, but now they've got the full set, and the full nades are on their way. Let's see. This is going to be a brawl. It really is. Oh, so many flashbangs. Look how fast he's out. Wow, Glaive got to go fast. He's actually pushed all the way up. Very brave play. I'm not sure that the G2 gang are going to be anticipating this. They will likely flash. Oh, it's given the... Option for Zipex to try and bait him in here, but the wall bank started to be attempted. Actually, lands as well. Glaive will pull one back. He's to try and drop the smoke here. Surely they'll swing on his position. Mage is trying to protect him the best he can. And there's the bomb. Astralis with three kills opening things up here. Kinias pulls one back. It's the wall bank towards Glaive. Bomb still down there. Woman in 15. And Device, that was a lock in. He could see the barrel, but Amanek, he reads it well. The flank shut down and the round back in contention. 4G2. We knew it was going to be chaos. Magis did so well to. Profit from the chaos caused by Glaive and his aggressive positioning. Now Kenny trying to support the push-up. Passive lines held by now, for now, by... Oh, Zipex! He was holding it, does oh. get caught, and they're, they're in everything pretty damn cleanly today. Recovering the AWP as well for Device into the next makes a lot of sense. He's on 3.2. Perfection! Seven for Astralis. Now, quickly for uh, people wondering what Amanex nades are doing at the start of the round, I'm just going to highlight that. So he's over towards the crane position. The smoke will land towards the top of Scaffold to stop them having early information. And the flashes that he's throwing over top are for anybody who wants to go aggressive on the ramp on the CT side and take some fights. Just uh, inconveniencing them and hopefully taking some vision away. So that's Amanex smokes and flashes at the start of the round, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely stuff. Thank you very much, Chad. Flashes of the star from T-Spawn. Never thought I'd see the day. It's really nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's cool. And uh, we'll get into a tactical timeout for G2 here. Giving up the previous round, a nice aggressive push from Glaive. Yielded three early frags for Astralis there. Nice crossfires, and it looks like we have Amanek on the MAC-10 here, Chad. So he could afford the AK. They definitely could have dropped him as well, but they're going for one of those more conservative Ooh. approaches. Uh, they're not spending their money, but maybe they've got an idea. They spotted a, a vulnerability on the map, perhaps. Well, they're going to have to go real fast here. Four MAC-10s, a Deagle, and this a is, light uh, They definitely could have got like, at least three AKs out. I'm really interested to see what they've got up their sleeve. This is uh, the second controversial decision I would say they've made. Not necessarily the wrong one by any stretch, just to uh, get that out there. It's the first two kills for Astralis. Zipex taking down those Mac 10s, no problem. And now, what have they got left? A few smokes and flashes, but no real firepower. Amanek will recover a Mac, or oh, an AK, I should say, not Amanek 10. <laughs> and uh, low HP for Kenny and Nexa. Yeah, I don't see a way out of this. The nades have done so much damage after the initial frags of Zipex. Blaze gets the rifle, gets the second, and can't believe his luck. There's a third where that came from as well. So G2, half investing, AKs were available. Now they'll have the full buy. I mean, you can't deny that. They'll definitely get everything out they needed, but 
was a rather easy, quote unquote, eight. Yeah, I, I think this has really set them back in their progression, G2. They, they had that patch of, I'm going to say four rounds. There's a yeah. patch of four rounds where the, the economic decision they made in round number five after winning round number four really yeah. came back to haunt them. So you take that patch out of this, we're tied up. This is even as you like, but Astralis, they're the ones with the rounds on the scoreboard here. And it looks like, look at this, another one. Glaive's just mopping them up. And fortunately, if you go against the grain and it backfires, it looks like a, a very silly decision at times, but had that have worked out for them, you would have been singing their praises. Saying, what, a, what a brilliant move there. So different. Yeah. No one saw it coming, but you want to take that risk, it can go against you sometimes, and it certainly has here on Vertigo, their pick. And if you factor in right now, Astralis is sitting 13 to one up in terms of opening duels. Five rounds on the board for G2. It's not that bad. It's very impressive, yeah, considering the fact that they have had to be in a situation like this, albeit perhaps with a trade rather sooner than here in round 14. Magisk will find a challenge, and it's Hunter that does prevail. That's the equalizer they needed, and again, G2 Overcoming that man disadvantage. Line up from Zipex. And a safe plant from Amanek. He'll be able to get out of dodge. Hunter is behind enemy lines. Biding his time in the smoke. Now as it fades, they're not expecting it. He does catch a flash, but gets away. Three versus three as it's equalized by Glaive. Time for the retake. Danes have smokes, kits, the whole shebang. Well, the MAC-10 up close and personal, in hand by Hamanek, and I thought he was going to fall off there. Regardless, he'll be taken down, and Nexa, the in-game leader for G2, left to win out in the one versus three, full flash to the face, but he has got time on his side. This quick kill has to go in his favor. Second nice. one as well. Has he done it up to this point? I think he might have done the full defuse coming it. through, and it's not going to work out for Device. He'll get the kill once again, and G2, they just about claw through it. Device survives. And it will be one more on the board for G2. But bear in mind, it's the final round coming up next. And all five went down again, Chad. They can't eco this one. Oh, dear. But still, the money is going to be abysmal. They had to work so hard for that. Next, uh, wiping the sweat from his brow as he secures the sixth. He needed that. His squad needed that. But the call will be equally as difficult as the clutch in the final round of this first half. You haven't got the cash. You still can't really put your best foot forward and it's the last round of the half. It's yeah. brutal. It's a cruel reality for G2. And I'm seeing a bit of a change up from Astralis as well. They've opted for a sacrifice. I assume there's a rifle for Magisk lying on the ground, but Glaive's rocking the AWP. I wonder if he's got a spawn in mind. Glaive's currently 3-0 in terms of opening dual success. You got Magus sitting at 5-0. Both having a, a lot of- I don't see a rifle for Magisk. Maybe he is just going snap and tow. Yeah, looks like it. Okay. Just the pistol here. So both teams with a couple of emissions going into the final round here of the first half. Two Mac 10s on the other side of things for Jax and Amanek. See if they want to go with some pace behind those this time round. Well, here we go then. The final round of this first half, G2. All things considered, some of the woes they've had to face have actually got together a pretty decent haul where the last round will be compromised. Great <laughs> shot from Dupree as they vault up towards construction. Here we are going to see Jax open things up. Kenny S in the rear as well with the Galil, but the AWP is too quick. That's going to be Device bringing things back to an even keel, but still absolute chaos here. We have had a very entertaining first map, and it is going to be a three on two in favor of G2 as they plant towards B. Yeah, Jax is in quite the optimal position here. I'm not sure Device is going to be ready for this. Oh. Oh, lovely. Pays off, finds the head, and Hunter will find back into the action with the second pistol round of the third series of the day. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. GG.bet do believe that Astralis have the edge, and after a half like that, I'm sure Henry and Chad aren't quite sure what to expect. 17 frags from Zipex, though. He's certainly been putting in a fantastic haul on the defense. Attack, though, could look very different. The pistol round will be the litmus test. Let's see what we have in store. Couple of smokes available for Astralis here, making good headway at the A ramp. We have got Hunter ready and waiting towards the sandbags here. Very common position in the sandbags, but uh, this is Astralis, Henry. Out. They don't. They're not going to overlook it. Well, there's the first grenade that does maximum damage. Ouch! And uh, it doesn't move. Hunter holding his nerve here, and they have their grenades out, so they are vulnerable. No one's watching sandbags as of right now. One of these days, I want the timing to be so good that it's four people all with nades They've got looking the at the sky. Still. Yeah. It's going to be for the site. There's no way they check this. Hunter's probably going to be good for one here. Here we go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. When the first shot's not clean, that power loses oh, all dead. that position loses all its power. They choose to back up. Interestingly enough, Hunter, 
He will be challenged again from that headshot position, but his existence is wasting time. Now it forces the molly out, and that's all the nades gone on. Glaive, he can get back into the site. Astralis have messed this one up. Yes, potentially with 35 seconds here. Luckily, the headshot hits device doesn't do a ton of damage here. And still, the bomb will continue its progress towards Ava Hunter. He's done such a great job this round. Still alive and kicking, looking for his fourth kill. Not going to happen, but certainly well for Jax. They find a clean sweep there. It was looking so good for Astralis. The A execution was looking perfect. The nade landing at Hunter's front door, but they don't even take him down. And it's the sandbags that prevails once again. How he gets down to Scaff, I couldn't tell you, but... And will be Hunter, fantastic round from him. 8-8 eight, eight, as G2 tie things up, no plan. And it could be the full eco for the AKs in the third. Yeah, that's a problem right there, and not one that Astralis would normally be overlooking. So just as simple as that, you guys highlighted it. We had perfect observing there from Rush to show exactly what was going on down. And well, with the grenade straight onto the pack, heading over towards B, I think Nex is going to have a lucky time mopping up against this eco. Grabs one in the flash. Oh, he goes down here, not as clean as we like. The bomb is in a very precarious spot, however, so probably the only kill they're going to find is that single one, and as we just have Glaive. So far away from the bomb side, no chance of getting the bomb down, but uh, maybe he finds a kill. It could be a small detail, but I had a, I have a feeling that Zipex threw Nexus Famas off the edge before he went down. Uh, we'll see if it gets retrieved. But yeah, he was just under so much pressure. He ran onto Nexus position. Jax is looking for it and doesn't retrieve it. So maybe, just maybe, the denial of a rifle. It's a very small feature. Of course, lots of cash to inject back into Nexus if they desire. Looks like Kenny's going to upgrade and throw his SMG over. That's going to be four SMGs and NORP against the full AKs here. So I imagine the CT setup's going to have to look different here, Hank. Yeah, you'd assume so. Kenny might be a little bit more combative. And you'd assume he'll position himself at the A ramp. But uh, we'll see what he's got in mind for us. Flashbangs towards B. And next up, feeling them going to start to fall back here as Dupree continues to push up towards B steps. They'll have device by him. Bomb not on this side, just trying to take vision away from the CTs if possible. Show a bit of presence. Hold players on that side of the map. We've been seeing this a lot lately. Teams going for the boost to get uh, an individual either up and on the landing, ready to pounce a little bit quicker, or just hiding, ready to take a fight if the CTs want to go aggressive. This is, oh, both sides of the map fight's about to happen. Dupree not ready for the push. He loses the AK. Yeah, that's huge. And Device could be exposed as well. They know Dupree had to have been boosted to get there, so certainly one around B can be a safe call. Rifle could continue to do good damage on Jax. For now, some space being taken, and it's Device that's really found a lot. But Glaive caught wow. out again on their own, and Nexa so precise with that MP9. It's not looking like a disadvantage in their hands this round. No, it's actually looking very good for them. They've got players towards B, Device flashed off. They'll have to buy this time now, and Magis pulls one back here, so they've got a chance to get this plant down and actually have a smoke in reserve as well, but that's now been removed. Device dropped, Kenny S doesn't know he's gonna miss again, but he does. Two on two, 25 seconds remaining, bomb to be planted here, but it's a fake. Oh, I'm nervous for them, and now Zipex has pushed in perfectly. All onto Nexa then, he will shut down. Magius oh. can they are in line. He just holds down Mouse 1, collects two, and wins a crucial round. Three in total. Impact player, that's for sure, Nexa. He secures the 10th and has broken the bank of Astralis. He won a 1v3 in the first half. And he's won that one on two right here with the bonus round in tow. So G2, they've started to steady after the shaky stages and scenes that we saw over there when they were trying to do their best attacking. Things uh, for G2, I would say, are always, at least in my opinion, going to be better on the defense, or at least it should be, because their individuals are, are very good fraggers. They're all able to multi-kill. They're all able to lock down a site on their own. Confident move there from Jax as well. Drops the incendiary to uh, give him a bit of space, meaning they can't swing towards with the Tech 9. Challenges T-Spawn, clean kill. Follows it up with the second, and it's Nexa. With the strong form continued here, as so he'll get the third kill of the round. 10 to 8 says G2 look very comfortable here, just Magisk and Zipex remaining. Shouldn't be any conversation about them getting the bomb down here, but maybe they can find a kill or two. This shot might just enable them. Zipex, there it is, just one. Can't really do much of it. Might not even get to the rifle. Yeah, so step one achieved, keep the rifle, is step two. Let's see if Hunter's going to let that happen. It does look like the perfect flank, and with HP that low, unfortunately, Zipex, it's not going to last much longer. 
Trying to make his way towards construction, but he'll be taken down in a second. That's going to be Hunter as G2. Really looking quite comfortable here. That's going to be 4-0 in the second half. MP9s will enable them to have a lot of cash going forward as well. The Orb and Kenny S with five grand in reserve. It's looking great out there for them on their map pick as well. Managed to pull this one right back after some very questionable financial decisions in the first half. G2 showing us why Vertigo is their pick. We do have overpass coming up next, no matter what happens here. And the reason I said that this completely lies on Vertigo is G2. Uh, not a not a massive overpass team, if we're going to be completely honest. This roster, they've only played it six times together. They uh, dabbled with it back when they first came together in 2019. And they've only played it once in 2020. That was taking out contact gaming on the road to Rio, 16 to 6. A bit of a surprise pick there. On your screens, you can see we're highlighting Zipex and Nex are the in-game leader on the G2 side of things. So I assume it's a uh, technical pause. Green, what, what's the situation? What are we looking at? So I've been down on the pitch, boys. There are a couple of little bumps down here. I'm trying to flatten them out as fast as I can. It looks like I've done it. Teams are happy. We'll be getting wow. back in. So you've taken on more of a groundsman role. Yes, I'm, uh, I've got the rakes out. I've got the lawnmower. Okay. Well, it's all I like clean that. now. I've Where's been doing some grass? bacon. I've been doing all sorts of he stuff, He did guys. make us some fantastic cookies Did you today? like the cookies? Dude, the great. Twix twist. Where are my cookies, Rush? Oh, oh dear. Okay, back well, to work. back to work. <laughs> No cookies for the producer, Fury. <laughs> Didn't tell him. So we do get into another gun round here. As I said, 4-0 for G2. Bit of aggression towards the B-steps as well. A nice crossfire. Nexa does avoid the flashbang. Guarantee himself a lovely kill there towards Dupree, who actually got flashed by his teammates somewhat upon entry towards B. So not the start they were looking for. Estrada still yet to find a single round here. Nice grenade as well. That's going to do no damage. So. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> Looks 10 good. out of 10 for the, the throw, but didn't quite connect. I really enjoy watching Kenny CT orping here. So now it's in action. You'll just get to watch the very methodical hold of the ramp and the different angles by which he can peek. For now, though, of course, forced off. Control given to Astralis, and it does look like they're lining up for the full execute. First will be a molly towards the sandbags, the sign of things to come. Jack's working on a flank here and nicely caught as he descends the ladder. That's the lineup for the one way. We'll enable him to see the toes crossing. But unfortunately, they've thrown smokes as well. Not quite as powerful. Well, time's a problem here. Jack's flank, it could be good. It certainly could, but they've just started to overcommit. Past his line of sight, he'll have to start working on the flank and device just got caught by a bullet. Stray one, straight through. Close opportunity here for Jax. And oh, a little it. messy. He's only going to get the one. Magisk will fall. Glaive did get the trade. Now supported by a fantastic spray from Zipex. A 2v3, certainly winnable, but maybe not now. Yeah. 4 HP. Doesn't look good at all. Zipex will be given the task of clutching this tower. He's got no HP. The defuse not actually coming in, but there it is. Another convincing finish to ever G2. Stayed calm, didn't overcommit. Touching the bomb there, tickling it, making sure that Zipex have the challenge. And of course he does. The orb takes him down, and that's going to be five in a row now for G2. Looking fantastic on the second half as Nexa continues to rack up the frags, taking his total up to 18 and 13 now. 104 ADR and uh, leading the team to success by the looks of things here. This is looking fantastic. Yeah, so, uh, well... They were getting owned in terms of opening jewels, and that stat line still stays. It's 15 to 5. But what's changed is the multi-kills. They're leading in multi-kills at this point. G2 have overtaken Astralis, 17 to 16. So their individual's doing a good job at putting two in the back pocket. Kenny S, oh, almost takes down Zipex. He actually wants another bite here. Gets the leg, wants a bit more. The nade could be good. <laughs> he went right into the back corner. He survives with 5 HP, Zipex. One of the most influential members of the Astralis Vertigo so far. Kenny, come on now. Going for wild no scopes just to try and keep that presence clear. We haven't said anything about it, but uh, Dupree only has three kills. That's a good point. Three and 13. It's actually a very slow map by his standards. This is peculiar. Astralis are clearing the sign saying nobody home. Device has walked all the way through. He's calling short clear two. Okay, executed. 
So Hunt up. He'll have the incendiary to deny, deny the plan here. Device already gone through elevators. This is huge. That's a guaranteed frag towards Kenny. Not the cleanest, but he gets it. And will be taken down in the back there. So now we'll have the four on four. This is a retake setup from G2. Bombs has gone down. Still with smokes and molotovs on the T side as well, along with the flashbangs as they get ready for the inevitable retake. G2 certainly going for this one. Glaive's going to be the first to contact. He's going to take the early fight, try and deny anyone they're trying to ninja onto that bomb. They disappear in a puff of smoke. Where did they go? The frags keep coming, though. Dupree finds his fourth, can't find his fifth, and so it's Magisk again to clutch. Defuse. There's no time to defuse. There's no time now. Nexa, get on it. This, it's all gone. You're both going to blow up. Nexa just getting out of the radius. They'll preserve their rifles, but Astralis will secure their ninth. In a similar fashion to G2 winning their first round as well, everyone goes down. The money's in a similar position. I don't think Astralis will eco here, but similar sort of scenes. And we all have 12 to 9. Astralis will take a tactical timeout to have the exact same conversation G2 had in their first half. Very peculiar. This has happened twice. All five going down to find their first round on the board here as well. So they lose the stage of the loss bonus, and we'll see what they can come up with. They are going to be buying AK-47s. But they won't have much else to go with them. Certainly don't have the AWP. Device will be on just the SMG here. UMP, to be specific. Drops $1,400, and Mages can afford an AK and armor. He might be Mac 10 Yeah, he's he's just gone for the AK, so that means he won't have any utility behind it. Uh, well, right here on the screens, that's Nico and Hunter. They're cousins, if you're not too familiar with the, the Kovach cousins. These guys, well, Hunter's older than Nico, but I'm sure we all know Nico for a lot longer than what we've seen Hunter in the server, but Hunter's got a lot of the tendencies that Nico has. Fantastic aim, loves a good old tap. Always uh, getting stuck in as well, the front of the pack. We'll see Device, as mentioned, on towards that SMG. Big round here for Astralis. Give this one up. They'll have $2,900 per player on top of zero. And this is going to be a difficult round to even get close to. Major Squirrel take a bit of grenade damage, kick things off down to 76. And they've got a bit of a focus towards B this time. You can see four players posturing outside the bomb site. It's time to edge up slowly. Next, uh, with 19 kills. Given the tower to defend here. So he's opted for quad. It's an interesting shot. Oh, look at the lineups here. We've got a full execute on our hands. So two smokes flying through the sky. And that will be a wall of smokes. Molotov to the default box. You can see it works nicely. What's the gap he's found? Opting to just lie on top of the box. It's powerful. Could get caught from either side. He's got his teammate responsible for one, but now he's gone down. Hunter falls. The spray from Jax inflicting good damage and spotted. Oh. Wow. Glaive jumping for the info, and he gets more than that. A headshot. And now the site can go down, or rather the bomb can go down. It's the flank from Magisk. He holds it, contains it, and now the 10th converted. Nice work from Astralis. Didn't have a whole lot to work with there, and they've got four players surviving. Next up. Unable to find any Franks there at all. Was sat on top of the bomb site, hoping they would commit, but they were being very patient, very methodical. Astralis will find double digits just in the nick of time. This was a must-win round for them, and it's looking very clean. Now we get an extra thirty-five hundred dollars per player. And in terms of the loss bonus for G2, you can see they'll actually only get fourteen hundred dollars, right? So, oh, nineteen hundred because they gave up the last round, of course. So they'll get nineteen hundred on top of whew, about fifteen hundred dollars here. It's not going to be great, but they save the orb. This is tactical timeout territory for them. They're going to have to work out what they're going to do. They've only got one left, so if they want to burn it now, it's going to be a big risk right here for G2. A lot more Counter-Strike still to be played. Execute from Astralis was on point. It almost felt like Nexa had done enough, denying with his own utility, being up close and personal. But it is that Glaive shot, the jumping through the smoke. Kill onto Nexa there, who was trying to peer on over the top. That was the round winner. That's going to be the bomb going down yet again for Astralis. So they're starting to build a bit of a bank over on that side of things. And they are going to burn that timeout. So, yeah, that's what I thought they would do. It's one of those weird rounds where Kenny S, he could certainly carry it for you. You have the potential to bring out a few from Asses, some Deagles. Enough to win the round is what I'm saying. It'd be a good chance to shut down Astralis. So if you won this round, it'd be huge. But their odds don't look good. I would say it has to be a pistol sort of situation. That CZ from Hunter confirms it, I would say. And uh, they should be allowing Astralis to get to number 11, but you never know. Kenny S can be a brick wall in these sort of rounds. If he gets the first two opening picks with an aggro A play, it could be onto something. Uh, he looks like he's facing towards B right now, so it could be indicative of his final decision. It could. So perhaps stacking up those pistols elsewhere and hoping that Kenny can contain and find something early. He is going to be going towards B. Okay, interesting. So a lot riding on this guy's shoulders. Amanek going to be smoking off ramp, hoping that's enough to contain the Astralis initially. Three of them actually opting for middle. 
to start this one off. Boost seems promising. Being checked, but that's good. Two damage. Glaive and device have caught a bullet from the Deagle. Jack's completely scar free. He wants more, though. <laughs> so brave. It does send them out of mid, though. He's done his job. He has, quote unquote, defended middle with the unarmored Deagle. Yeah, it's enough. Does just under 100 damage. Pushes them back towards A, and they've actually repositioned another CT player here as well. Woof. Can he S or move towards B? Oh, he's actually come in. All right, then. CZ, if he gets this opening kill, it'll be enough for Kenny. There it is. That's and the bomb. bomb goes down as well. This is huge. And Amanex pushed for another. Oh, and Kenny's orbs filled the feed. My goodness. G2, they've got the advantage. They just need to finish the job. There is a lot of time and a lot of very talented players. A weapon retrieval goes wrong. No, it doesn't. Nexa still gets that frag despite the disadvantage and device. Oh, my goodness. Very quick oh. from Nexa. He falls as well. G2 with only an orb. <laughs> Pistols sprinkled in for good measure. You're dead on thinking that was a guaranteed kill there against Nexa. That was Dupree though, Alex. And he's 5 and 15. He's having a nightmare out there. That was a, a key frag. That would have been the difference maker in the round. Kenny S delivers. This was the moment. Ooh. Dupree should have had that. He's got no armor. And an AK-47, he wasn't even going for headshots or body spray. He knows I should have connected. It cost him the round. And it will be 13 to 10. The eco works out for G2. Money weak for Astralis now. And they're trying to send it towards middle. They take a dink. Mage is down to 12. And Jax, confident to stay once again. Jax's play style is very much just these, these shots and fall back. Except the thing is, the shots are so good. He's almost always done something to you. As he falls back to reposition. Another dink. Happy to report. Crucial opportunity from Devise. They both peak, but Zipex actually catching short player. Hunter now has a lot to do. He is dinked. He's hiding behind the sandbags. A smoke's not going to save him. <laughs> Device is the only one to have fallen for Astralis so far. However, they're all over B. The bomb's coming in as well. The CT's just going to have to look to save those rifles. Yeah, this one's a lock. Bomb goes down. They're already being swarmed. Astralis will do their best to take these rifles away as well. The money on the side of things for G2, it's not bad. It's also not great. They're going to want to hold on to these if they can, but I don't think they'll be granted that. You can just see as soon as the bomb's planted, we can just take a look at the progression bar in the top of your screen. Look, they're already on the chase. They're already on the hunt. They're going to be closer than G2 are ready for. Dupree hasn't cleared his corners. He's going to go down, but at least the information's there. They know where Nexa is. They can isolate and chase if they need. We'll see if they can do so. Don't have the biggest bank rolls necessarily justify, but we have the one player right next to him. That's Zipex, who I think spotted him through the top hauling. We are going to have a final kill found. Big one as well. Puts pressure on G2 now of Amanek and Jax hovering under $3,000. Astralis right back in contention for Vertigo here. It's been a real difficult second half, although they went down 5-0. But starting to balance out here. They've won three out of the last four rounds. Loss bonus for G2 will be a 1,900 last. Uh, going forward, sorry. So uh, this is actually $1,400. Have to take a very modest investment with a few pistols. And that's about it. Two sets of Kevlar. Yeah, bo both teams are at bottom of the barrel loss bonus, right? Yeah. Within the bottom two stages. So if we keep going back and forth in terms of rounds, by the time we get to the bookend, the close of map number one, it's going to be scrappy buyers on both sides. So each kill, each round, each weapon, it's going to get more and more important from this point forward. So whatever damage G2 can do here, it's good. It doesn't even matter about the round, just about how much they can take away. Dupree, good shots, and oh, Hunter even better. Does he get away with this? Might do with the smoke going down here. Wow, not bad at all. He'll escape. Jax is on the flank. Unfortunately for him, he's only got a P2K. He may have been spotted by Dupree there. Not sure. Yeah, it looks like the way Dupree reacted certainly did see him. And now just putting the brakes on, making sure they don't throw this one away. Molotov down towards Sandbags and Glaive just checking out the close range positions here. We've got Jax upgrading to the Deagle. They certainly heard that. Dupree just keeps an eye. Yeah, this is What's strange. It's really strange right now what Astralis are doing. They're just waiting and seeing if they want to push at all. And, well, two, they were holding. That dink's going to...
come on through. Makes Device think better of going up short by himself. They'll hear the Deagle as well. So now they know there's two over towards A. They know Jax is behind. There's 20 seconds left. This one can still fall apart. It, all it takes is one shot through the smoke. I was actually referencing the CTs. It seems Glaive, he's capable as well because that will enable the plan. They can't contest it, can't stop it. And now the round goes Astralis' way. Four left standing, not too bad. Nothing to worry about. So this game is delivering across the uh, across the vertigo, 12 to 13 now. It does look like Astralis have got this back under wraps and we could be seeing all the rounds. As we mentioned, only $1,900 coming into this one, so it'll have to be the eco again for G2. And we'll see Amanek drop down there as scaffolding and Glaive just mowing them down. No problem towards the end. They only lost one kill there after taking a lot of damage. Well, there is a buy. I take it back. So the money's not too bad overall. Orp there for Kenny S. The grenade's deployed oh. as well. <laughs> Hasn't gone necessarily exciting for it. He's doing some fireworks there with that HE. Yeah. Thing. Just lobbing her up into the, the sky. Astralis from the bottom of the ramp just going, ooh. Ah. Ah. Giving them something to look at. <laughs> so right now, if Astralis win this round is where the game can get out of control for G2. 2400 coming into the bank balance next. Not enough to buy. Astralis could potentially snatch the game right here. Looks like they're progressing up towards A. Molotovs are plenty. Clearing off all the close angles, making sure nobody from G2 is home. Deep Molotov to force them back off the alley position. Well, they're getting aggressive here. Hunter up close with that silence. Then 4 he has to deliver more than one. Yeah, and already tested. Kenny will only hit the flick. Device, his bullet more lethal. And Device has got another one. Hunter needs both. He needs that AWP, but he does good damage to Magisk instead. I don't know if that's a valid compromise because already a four versus two, one of them needed to translate into a kill. A saving. That's going to be it. Yeah, there's nothing more to be said about this round. The bomb goes down. Amanek and Jax have opted to save. And like we said, Lost Bird is so bad for them. It's $2,400 going forward. And Astralis doesn't feel comfortable now. They can actually justify the hunt. This is with the clutches we were talking about in play. Nexus 1v3, the one on two. The Amanek getting the Molotov kill onto Glaive and winning the round from the grave. Oh, Dupree, he can take both of these away just here. Not going to happen. They get an upgrade to an AK-47. Amanex going to be licking his chops about that one. Or Jax will be. As long as one of them gets it, doesn't really matter. They can share. Yeah, they're going to have to. Looks like we'll have Astralis tying things up. That confirms that there'll be no diffusers here. And just Amanek and Jax. They do recover the AK-47, though. So not all is lost, but... Still a very difficult round going forward. If they can steal one of these away with the two saved rifles, they're right back in business here. But it is going to be Device finding a couple of very impressive kills here towards the A side. The second was quick as well. And just to find him on the bomb side. So, partial by, as we'll see, Amanek and Jax try and win the round single handedly. It worked for them last time, excuse me. Jax is going aggressive. Oh, that smoke is perfect. It's bought him a lot of space, but Dupree's caught the Amanek aggression. That's going to change the pace, I think, for Astralis. Playing around the smoke, Nex is not really sure what he's supposed to do with this. Can't cross back. And they're coming his way. He's going to get checked here. Flash is good, but... Dara Dupree, great shots. No. Great shots from Nexer. He even gets a chance onto Magisk. It's small, it's minute, but it's still a chance. With the rifle still in play, there always is a chance, but Jax does take significant damage there. Burns down to 68. Kenny has flashed in, and he does very well with it. It's actually the AK to find a kill in the end. And it's back to a three on three. We said this round could be complicated, but Glaive starts to dig them out of it. They know these last two remaining players are towards B. Good smoke towards construction. Molotov to lock them in as well. That's a real so nice play. And Kenny S will push for it. He had to. Glaive just wins around uh, with that play. Have they just been stuck in there? Either way, he'll win it. It was just very well done. That was great by Glaive. He did everything he had to do. Yeah. Right? He found the gap with the frag, isolated them with the smoke, made sure they couldn't push with the Molotov, giving his team heaps of time to rotate towards that A bomb site. And at this point here, 14 on the ball for Astralis. Things are looking very, very good. G2, they don't even have the AWP in Kenny's hands here. Ooh. Interesting to see three silenced M4s. So we get to see a different perspective of the CT setup. Most commonly still the M4A4 in action. See how far they get with the alternate alternate version.
very deep nade from Hunter does chip away at two members of the Great Dane. One more round for Astralis. And the pressure really is on for G2, but the Lost Bonus done to pick up now. Maximum into the next. Zipex. He'll be working that A ramp once again. Bomb on the back of Magus, because we'll see Kenny S ready to blow the incendiary. Hunter active as ever, 21 kills. And they're gonna be a bit more active here. The flashbang will be delivered, they'll swing around from this. No one there though, so don't get the quick kill they're looking for. And Astralis ready and waiting for that peek from the crane. There it is. Huge. And he can't really contest, especially when device is hitting everything. Two riflers go down, and it's the AWPA to open up the A site. At such a crucial juncture of the game, round 28. Kenny now has to overcome the odds, and he's lost his teammates as well. Amanek and Kenny S. No rush to get this bomb down. He had the good timing on his spray. He understands where they're coming from, just not quite enough to translate into kills. Well, save again? I think they have to, Chad, if you oh, don't mind me no, saying. This is, this is a horrible position to be in. Yeah, this is where the pressure really gets to you now. You have to save just because you need something into that next round. Luckily, like we mentioned, they do have the maximum loss bonus, but G2 will be on their knees here. After going up 5-0 at the start of the second half, it's starting to really unravel for them. Five let's, in a row now for Astralis. Let's do some quick maths, right? So Kenny, he's going to go up and he's going to have over 4K, so he'll be able to drop a rifle. Amanek will be able to do the same. That means there's only one individual on the side of things for G2 who would have to buy themselves. We will be missing some grenades across the board. So it, it's going to be compromised here. To defend, to make sure that Astralis don't take their map pick, the buy is not going to be great. Let's, uh, let's just put it that way, because G2, they've had financial woes throughout, but they've even been winning the clutch. Okay. They're still in this position. I will say there, though, if Amanek had instead taken his save towards the T-spawn and thrown a HE grenade, he could have taken four wide weapons away from Astralis there. Yeah. He had a HE. Well, well, maybe we'll let him know. We'll send him a I'll, DM I'll, after you know, this. I'll send him a letter, we'll Chad. I'll send a him letter? a letter. Yeah. In the post? Yeah, I've okay. been working on my calligraphy. I'll whip it out, old school. That's a pen. Oh, the Silent Stem 4 here has allowed them to get up a, a bunch more nades than I originally had thought. Jack's onto the MP9. The buy is actually pretty good. It doesn't work out for Jax. Four more rifles, device catching those HEs. They were certainly not in vain. But G2, a familiar set of circumstances now could get worse. Next, uh, he's exposed, and Dupree's found the perfect oh, off angle. It's looking good for the finish here. That kill might change things slightly. Three players stuck in towards the elevators. They're starting to pull kills back here, but they know where the remaining two are now. Hunter, he'll still have 100 HP, two kills to his name, and Kenny S at 21, but B control has been gifted towards Astrala. CT seem to be aware of it. This kill, oh, not the cleanest from Dupree. He has been struggling this game. The grenade might find him. Not quite. Kenny S to try and clutch out. It looks like Astralis could have vertigo in the bag. They do. 16 to 13, the final.